Hey guys, welcome to the shop on a an an no a mid latish February windy afternoon. I am in the process of going through inventory, rearranging the shop, taking a look at do I want to build guitars? Do I want to build a coffee can guitar, a license plate guitar, a cigar box guitar, or work on some of the stuff that I've been picking up that needs junk piling. Um, and if you're into arranging stuff, you might want to see an episode I just released not too long ago called The Cure to Creativity in which I show you a little system for when you're building individual guitars or setting up your inventory to know what you have, how to arrange parts and know I have everything I need to fix up that guitar or build that guitar when the, when the time comes. So you can just basically look at your rack and figure out okay it's time to go to work on that one and um, that one in my world can mean something like this Greyhound bus themed guitar which had a lot of different graphics a lot of different matchbooks to collect a Mississippi bus license plate um, even a Greyhound uh, uniform pin and a button off of a bus driver's uniform so that episode is really good about tongue-in-cheek cure to creativity it basically means if you're busy thinking about what it is you don't have and ordering stuff the next thing you know your shop's a mess and you can't really predict what you're going to make next and then you're kind of floating along and if you have ADD uh, yeah that that stuff kind of feeds it and you're flopping all over the map so anyway uh, check out the I cards when they pop up up there not right about now but before all right today's episode is called the Northridge nightmare and there is a guitar in this case yeah a little big for a violin I do have a violin in here don't believe me yeah don't doubt me dude never where were we? Yeah, the Northridge Nightmare. We're going to open this up in a little bit, but I want to take care of some business first. I get these subscribers that are asking me, how do you run across these guitars? Well, first off, let's talk about L.A. and how I got to L.A. Um, get some popcorn. Definitely. Um, and get some coffee because I'm probably going to push you to sleep. I don't condone, condone, condude, condone the use of cop. You know what? That's a good time. That's a good lead in for the barrel house word of the day. Which, since we're talking about LA, we're not going to do the barrel house word of the day. We're going to do the LA word of the day, which is dude. D U D E. It's not D U U D E. It's D U D E. Dude. And what dude means is like a male person and it's someone you see on the street but you don't know all the way up to someone that you really dislike but not shoot or kill. So anything in there that's a, that's a dude is dude. That is the word of the day. Dude. Dude. Okay, so I have literally been in every continental western United States meaning west of the Mississippi so I grew up in Wisconsin I lived in Montana Oklahoma Nevada and California so while I was living in Nevada um, the oil fields took me to cranes which took me to palm trees which anyway there is an episode called who is Palmero right up there right about now um, yeah, you want to see that one, but guys, Palmero, Palmero is Palmero, which is a Spanish word for people who work in palm trees, mainly in the date growth. So that's where this came from. It doesn't say that here. Wow. It says it right here. Anyway, we're going to get to Echo Park here in a minute. In fact, let's do that right now. So I'm in Nevada. I'm literally working at the Mirage 
casino. You're the one that's got the fake volcanoes and the palm trees on top that burn up. I mean, if you're a Palmero, what better place is there for you than a place that burns palm trees up on purpose on top of a fake volcano? By the way, episode of the Matchbook, The Mirage, Las Vegas. Check that box. Anyway, when people, like, what do you do? They see movies of me moving palm trees. They see stuff I write about palm trees. Uh, but the average person thinks I trim palm trees. And, um, yeah, no. Um, so I'm literally at the Mirage working on a project. And um, I get a call from the company that says, we need you to look at the palms at a historic park in Los Angeles. Okay, so I, I've been to Milwaukee, I've been to Chicago, I've been to, you know, huge cities like Missoula, Montana, or Bright Lights, baby, going to Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, but I had never really been to a big city before, but I didn't know it. And so I get on a plane, I literally leave the Mirage, get on a plane at McCarran Airport. When you see all those palm trees uh, at customer drop-off, yeah, my crew and I planted those about 1996. Anyway, I get on the plane. I fly into Ontario, or maybe Burbank. Yeah, Burbank, California, cultural capital of the world. And someone drives me directly to Echo Park. Echo Park was built in the late 1800s. You can stand in Echo Park and see the skyscrapers of the city. So it's a historic park, and there are palm trees there. And uh, there was a disease going through them, some structural stuff. And if you're at all interested in that, just send me an email. Wait at the end. You'll see my email, and then I'll know you're a tree dork like me. Uh, but anyway, so I land there. And my job is to talk about what's going to happen in the future to reforestate the, the park because these palms are an identity element to the park. And so we are setting up computer, handheld computers to do data entry. And um, once all the data is entered, I look it over, I run it through a computer, and I analyze it and then write the study and, and blah, 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 and do a presentation to people in suits funded by the taxpayers and and then my book goes on a shelf and collects dust. <sighs> anyway, I land there. Back then I looked a little bit different than I do now. Um, getting older has been good for me because I, you know, the attractiveness thing was just debilitating when I would go out in public, you know, the paparazzi thing, I, I, I get that. Anyway, no one told me that I was basically going to be showing up in a park that was overrun by Salvadorian gang members. I didn't know any of this. I didn't know anything about what's going on. I'm standing there looking like me 30 years ago with a computer going like this. And these people are walking by me and I'm asking the people with me, do those people, um, are, what is that they're doing? Is it it seems to be some territorial marking crossed with sign language. Yeah, anyway, that's Echo Park for me. That's where my career started. Now, here, I ended up moving out here. I do a lot with palm trees. Palm trees have been good to me. Uh, my work with palm trees has been very good with me. Uh, to me, my activism in the community has been very good to me. And um, the guitars have been very good to me. All of those three things have put me on the front page of the newspaper out there. There's me with the Texas junk pile in my shop that's even messier today than it is in this picture. Anyway, that is the story of me in L.A. So take out the earplugs now. We're going to get to the content. So people ask me, how, how is it that you can get all these guitars or parts and pieces or, you know, because on any given day, I could go out and find, have you seen this one yet? I forget, um, a... A skeleton of a 1950s Gibson lap steel that's missing a lot of parts and I just go through and fix it up and make it work again. Um, I can find an oil can guitar. I can find the parts to build mine. I could even find this Ibanez AF55 for sale in pristine condition at a price that would literally shock you. Um, or, most importantly, 
Yeah, I know my side profile isn't what the front one is, but you don't need to share that with people, do you? Or, most importantly, if I need a Chick Flick Teal guitar strap, I have no problem getting one. So why is that? Well, LA has 4 million people in it. Um, I never counted them, but I got to trust somebody. Probably the government. Anyway, in Los Angeles County, there are 10 million people. 10 million people. So when you're asking me, how do you get to stuff? Well, from my work, I know a lot of music people. I know people who have been president of Capitol Records. I know people that have managed artists back into the 60s. I know a lot of different people that are agents. And I mean, my own kid who used to be in the videos has gotten too good for that. And now is taken up like music law or something like that, contract law. And managing these people anyway good for Kendra right you knew that was coming she wasn't hanging around here just to watch me put a license plate on a on a broom handle right anyway so I know a lot of different people and LA is a music hub it's it's a hub for guitars it's a hub for repairs of guitars you can get some of the best guitar re luthiers uh, amp repair specials all that is right within 50 miles of where I live and a few minutes from where I work so uh, I guess at some point in their life remember Echo Park was here from the 1800s music was around when Echo Park was first starting did you know that yeah music is not new and so I think everybody that has come into LA, half of those people were going to be Eddie Van Halen or David Lee Roth or, you know, whoever. And, and so they go out, they buy a guitar, they get better and better. And, um, and the next thing you know, there's a flood of these guitars on the market. So on any given day, you can hit a marketplace, Craigslist, uh, offer up, any of those things and get certain uh, search parameters. And I'm after the things with the F holes. And they'll be ringing off all day. So as long as you have the money, as long as you know what you're looking for, and I'm going to use up another card. I think I gave you a good episode, especially if you're into the F-hole stuff there, about a uh, beginner's guide to vintage cheap arch tops right up there. Watch that one because um, it's my experience that some of this stuff, the price that it starts off at, once you go through and, and, and are respectful to people and tell them, hey, this is um, got this problem and this problem and this is what it would take to fix it. And I'm, I do junk pile guitars. I am going to fix them up. They're never going to be pristine and somewhere in there is your price and my reality. So that said, I'm going to pop this case open uh, and, and go through what I found here. Um, early one morning, about 6 a.m., um, after a little bit of negotiations, again, you have to be able to move and and uh, come up with cash or payment stuff, and you got to kind of know what to look for in the pictures or anything. Anyway, I picked this up on Zelza Avenue before 6 a.m. one morning in the North San Fernando Valley, and we're going to look at uh, another one of my treasures. Um, and I'll get this stuff put away. Um, but again, to answer your question, if you are in Alto, Wisconsin, or you're in Winter, South Dakota, chances are you're not going to have access to this stuff. And the advantage I have is there's no eBay shipping and I can look at it. So um, if it comes up that you're in one of these tiny places where you don't have access to inventory, and you need help finding a specific guitar, you write me and then I'll see if I can find someone that wants to help you. Let's go to the bench. Hey guys, I got an idea. Why don't we flip this case open here and have a little closer look. Yeah, it's the Northridge Nightmare. Check that out. All right. Good news is that it is a 1964 Crucianelli Model 1200B Panoramic made in Italy. Now, it's got P90 pickups. This thing sounds incredible. It's got three of the four uh, of the original 
uh, tuning knobs that's a little problem the binding on this thing is exquisite but um, good roller bridge uh, interesting uh, tail piece he said the binding is incredible it's got purfling on it that's black and white alternating look at that that's interesting i think that that is a horn uh knot it's got gibson tuners the plaque is missing the name plaque and you can see if you look closely that there is an offset on the mounting holes of the name plaque so the indicators to me about this guitar as to what it was came this is a very distinctive pickup position switch it's got that florentine single cutaway like the texas junk pile remember that episode right up there right about now so anytime i see f holes and that kind of cutaway i'm all over it anyway um when we flip it over here we're going to see the other telltale sign that told me what it was and that is this plaque very distinctive corners are distinctive it's what holds the neck on but it's got those angled corners it says made in italy and it's uh, got the strap button and it also is embedded with a visual of this reflection of the ceiling of my shed isn't that incredible so just generally being made in 1964 in italy uh, and being shipped around this is obviously again a gibson 175 knockoff uh, you might have had servicemen stationed over there this was in the middle of the cold war the beatles were playing stuff that looked like this and this would have appealed to anybody now god knows what has happened with this guitar since it was bought in 1964 and ended up on zelza boulevard in la in 2021 but it's a beautiful guitar the problem with it is it has all kinds of lacquer cracks all over it everywhere you can actually hear my finger going over there some people try to recreate these cracks and checking and lacquer checking and call it relicking an instrument but they'll use uh, a heat gun and an air can to clean off computer keyboards or some of them will get down into using things like uh, um, propane <laughs> really um, uh, yeah no we don't want to do that uh, but this stuff is so severe that I can't yeah there it's bad it's about ready to chip out right there let's flip it over yeah you got the same thing going on here and it goes right up to the binding the bindings intact but yeah you've got lacquer cracks everywhere now short of somebody of trying to do this to make a relic job out of it and failing um oh i want to show you it goes up on the headstock too that i could live with but certainly not this it affects the playability of the instrument anyway the san fernando valley gets very hot there are times i'm coming home and the car thermometer will tell me it's 109 or 112 and so you take this um, hot cold leave it swelling up in a case hiding it in the garage and forgetting it's there um, after the estate sale and boom you've got this kind of stuff so let's put it on the stand quick okay i wanted to point out again a couple of things there are p90 pickups on this thing and it sounds really good in fact the last thing we're going to do before um i end the episode is put it on a little um roll in micro cube and strum the strings here but i want you to notice that um, it's got great binding everywhere, but these little cracks, I mean, they are literally everywhere. And again, this is rapid and radical heat change is what this is, and they're everywhere. Um, so let's move up to this spot right up here. Um, luckily, uh, this is here. I'm trying to find this piece or this roller uh, bridge or any of these um, the volume control knobs would be a nightmare right now but um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this cover plate off now guys I am a stickler if this screw went there when you put it on your bench make sure it goes back there I, I lose sleep over that kind of stuff here 
and um, but this cover was very very distinctive now something to think about is you'll notice that the knob on this here is the same as these knobs and they're missing so that kind of gives you some opportunity um, again this thing is never going to be pristine if it was um, it certainly wouldn't be in my shop right now some collector would be after it there's one on ebay right now and it's approaching a thousand dollars without these condition issues but the reason i'm taking this off now is because i can pull this out look there is a resistor right there that's missing its attachment to something so that's not good but um what i did was i peeled this back a little bit like so pull this out and be careful that i don't want to mess anything up any more than it is already there we go um it's not cooperating anyway if you look right here this crack runs all the way up to the edge of the wood and the wood is really not that thick at all uh, if i'm gonna measure the wood we'll put that there like that yeah the wood underneath it's only that thick so the idea that i would peel off all this lacquer and sand it down to the wood not good this guitar is surprisingly light so what i did was i did a little test repair right here and i used some ca glue which is uh, a very thin um low viscosity high viscosity um i have to remember from my mud logging days in the oil field which one is which but it's very thin and it will right run run right into these cracks and then you can turn around and sand this down and i also did a little bit of that down in this area down here let me see if i can zoom in and yeah i don't think i want to get any closer than that anyway there's a thin tip that you use you want to make sure the guitar is level because on these uh, arch tops remember the arch starts about here off the edge and then it'll run down and when you're working with this glue it'll run down over your binding and all that kind of stuff so there's a lot of using your bean bags and stuff to keep things level and being patient but i just put some of that ca glue on the micro tip and ran it down there and what do you know it sealed up this crack pretty well now some people would use a tinted uh, glue of that type and you can certainly get that through stumac in fact i'll give you a link down below right about now to kind of show you a kit that they have for those kinds of glues but you could go in and tint this uh, glue and kind of make it look like the grain uh, problem is it will run across uh, cracks like this one here going back and this one here um, yeah it, it's not going to look good for me so the bottom line here is I need to strip all of this stuff off let me zoom back out where you can see what I'm doing here yeah we're going to strip everything off of this guitar and get down to the body and um we are going to pull the neck off can you see that let's check the camera angle yeah the neck will will pull off here i, I want to make sure that when i take this stuff off that i use a torque indicator to tell me how much these were under torque you know what a torque uh, wrench is i, I want to know um uh you'll find sometimes on these guitars that there are actually pieces of cardboard acting as shims to level the neck up right in this area so this whole thing will lift off right here but you want to know how much pressure uh, was on each one of these bolts and again you're going to write that information down in one of your books that you have with the bag that has all the parts in it wrapped up and safe hanging on the rack again the cure to creativity that was a great episode um, take a few minutes and watch it and get yourself arranged because 
being arranged, you lose a screw like this, or even, perfect example, that knob right there, you're looking at 60 bucks if somebody's got one. Um, but I'm going to go through and stabilize this body and um, and then I'll make some decisions. It may get the uh, chick flick teal uh, sunburst paint job that we used on the hobo junk pile. Remember that episode up there? The one that got the psychic reading? Uh, yeah, yeah, that is a, a cultural phenomenon, if anything. Watch that one right up there right about now. Anyway, I'm going to close this out. I'll keep you posted along the way. I'm going to look for some help with somebody that knows how to um, do wiring and stuff and figure out where that come from. You know, looking at this, I'm much happier with my own soldering skills after I've seen that. But we're going to use care and put this back together. It's going to take some time and it might be a bit before you see it. But um, yeah, this is an example of what, what might be floating around LA before the sun comes up. Almost forgot guys, we need to hear some sound. up dude all right guys there it is i'm going to keep you posted um this is one of those things that as you um go along you're going to learn some things and um taking things apart and putting them together and um going off into the world of resistors and electronics and that kind of thing um but i will film bits and pieces along the way and then once it comes together you'll know because it will be uh, there will be a reference to the North Ridge nightmare um, as I piece it together. And um, we're going to learn a lot along the way. So, hey, thanks for uh, understanding why I have such good access to guitars and um, how where you live affects uh, what the availability of parts and instruments are to you in your profession. Hey, thanks for watching. Give me a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't. Um, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the other Roots instruments that I built. I got a bunch of that going on in the background. We're just in a different world right now and uh, building up episodes about F-hole guitars. Hey, I'll see you next time.